What's up guys, Econ John here. Welcome to our fourth part on endogenous growth models. In this video, we're gonna talk about demographic differences in our workers, specifically about students and workers. Let's go. So until now, we've been analyzing economic growth without any demographic specification. In this video, we will present a model with more demographic depth. We know, broadly speaking, there are two economic periods for the working individual, a period where they are in school studying and a period when they are working. Additionally, we will note that our individuals have some fixed lifespan T, spending the first E years in schooling. In this model, our, all of our individuals have to go to school before going to work. Uh, furthermore, the overall population is said to be growing at the rate N, such that N is between zero and one, and the age structure is said to be stable. Uh, if we use uh, NT to denote the population at time T and BT to denote the number of individuals born at time T, we obtain the following equation, which is the population at time T N is equal to the number of births between time T is equal to zero and time T is equal to capital T. We can further simplify this integral into an algebraic one. So we have some math over here. Uh, this second step is from the fact that we have bt is equal to bt minus tau times e raised to the power of n tau. Uh, if we are treating bt as a constant, we can further just pull it out of that integral and get this equation, right, which is nt is equal to 1 minus e raised to the power of negative n tau all over n times births at time t. So Using that equation from before, we can define how labor force at time t is determined using a similar framework, right? So we seem to have the same equation, but except for tau being equal to zero, we have it from time e, right? Rewriting this equation, we follow the same steps and we get equation two, where our labor force at time t is equal to e raised to the power of negative n times e minus e raised to the power of negative n times capital T all over n times the number of births at time t. If we were to divide equation 2 by equation 1, we obtain the ratio of workers to total population equation 3. Using this equation, we can find output per person as opposed to output per worker on the balanced growth path. So uh, note from the previous video, uh, we can write the determination of output at time t defined as the following equation, right? So in our video where we talked about augmenting the solo model with human capital, we have this type of equation. Um, if we are interested in output per person, uh, we simply divide this equation by nt. This gives the balanced growth path of output per worker to be this following equation, right? Where y all over n is equal to output per effective labor, right? Times at times ge times e raised to the power of negative n capital E minus e raised to the power of negative n to the ca times capital T all over one minus e raised to the power of negative n capital T, where this yt star, right, is the output per effective worker on the balanced growth path. Using this equation, we can capture a lot of insight on the role of educational achievement in the economy. So the implication of this result from the previous slide is the following. The amount of education each person receives alters the output per person balanced growth path. By the same proportion, it changes this G as a function of capital E education times E raised to the power of negative N E minus E raised to the power of negative nt all over one minus e negative nt, right? This term from our equation. A rise in education has both a positive and negative effect. That's the other point. Um, the intuition for the second point is that when e increases, human capital per worker rises, but based on the mechanics of the model, right? Specifically the fact that, you know, people have to go to school before they go to work, right? Less of the population is now working at a given time. Right, implying that there are a diminishing returns from education. Uh, with this model, we have some similar results which are given by the solo model with regards to physical capital. Um, so what we've implied here is that there exists some golden rule level of education for optimal output in the economy. So uh, this is the fourth part of 
our series on endogenous growth models. I might go and upload a video on uh, deriving if there's a golden rule of education in this model, but uh, we'll see. Take care, guys.